Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. We're trying Tales and Tactics. This has an interesting development background. Uh, people who uh, made this or are working on this made the Downfall Slay the Spire mod, which I believe is basically the most popular mod for Slay, Slay the Spire. I might be wrong about that, but I know it was pretty popular. Popular enough that it like actually got quite a bit of renown. But uh, in any case, this is an auto battler. And I've been uh, known to an, enjoy an auto battler from time to time. And in fact, um, I've covered a couple on this channel. Um, so let's check this one out. I like the, the theming. They've gone for kind of like a tabletop uh, theme. And I, I really appreciate that. New run, begin a new tale with a fresh new tournament com competitor. Sure. We're going to play with Syngrim. Sounds good. Begin the tale. Training yard. You wake one morning to find a letter sealed with the mark of the Dea. Every year the Dea hosts a grand tournament, a ruthless competition with civilians from all, the, all over the country battle for the honor of challenging the Dea champions. Winning the grand tournament is the dream of every young caller looking for fame or glory. With a gleam in your eye and a thirst for adventure, you set off on your quest. What tale will the bards tell of your journey? Did you triumph over the Dea, or the Dea with clever planning and tactics, or will you feel the sting of defeat and hope for better luck next year? Tell us about yourself. My name's Singrim, Singrim Bold Pebble, but everyone calls me Sing. I've been a student of the arcane ever since I can remember. Graduated from top of my class, went uh, from being a student to a professor. Why did I want to enroll in the Grand Tournament? Well, I thought it might be a chance to do something different. It's one thing to read about all the wonders of the world, but it's something else to see them for yourself. I thought it would be a good way to meet new people. Maybe even that special someone. Aw oh, dang. Get some warm-up fights in before the real combatants. You have a one army size. So as I have uh, understand it, this game is not dissimilar to um, like a team fight tactics. I've played exactly one game of team fight tactics. I uh, I won't say I stayed away from it, but it definitely gave me um, you will be very addicted to this game vibes. And so I kind of stayed away from it. It not being on Steam definitely helped me quite a bit. I did play quite a lot of um, uh, auto chess on uh, the Dota workshop. But um, other than that, I've played a lot of competitor auto battlers, including that like Chinese one that was floating around on Android for a while. Anyway, we're good. Damage is foes. I think uh, this is our drafting period. So we've got um, two star points and we can buy uh, so any number of these and they cost one point each, I think. So we've got Teak dashes to a foe damaging all enemies in between. Um, uh, Amanito. <laughs> and that's real freaking Amanito, bud. Deploys spores in a cone dealing damage and disarming enemies. We can see what faction they're they're in in the corners of their profile. These are very standard auto battler or drafting mechanics. I don't mind that um, I've seen these before. I haven't seen them enough times because I'm not sick of them yet. It hasn't uh, it hasn't really. I, I I just kind of enjoy them. I like I like straight synergies, and I appreciate that drafting is a place for something like that. So let's see. Uh, do any of these match? It doesn't look like it. It looks like they are... Well, okay, these two are both fighters. They don't have the fighter clan tag, but they do both have a similar tag on the top left, so we could try those. Maybe they'll work together. One thing I never have gotten used to or gotten um, like to figure out very well in these types of games is placement. I'm not sure what it, how it works. This unit exceeds your army size limits. Oh! Oops. What's the army size of this guy? I can sell them. I think I just have an army size of one. I have to assume that army size indicates the number of units you can place. Increases when you slay a boss. Okay. We're fighting goblin goofballs. So how do we get things going? I'm not seeing like... Oh, there we go. On top, top of the screen. Bow, bow. Bow, bow, bow. We got some Danny Elfman type music going on. Heck yeah. Bow, 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 bow. Smack him. Smack him dead. We destroyed the goblin goofballs. We are victorious. Plus one heart. 
recap i guess that'll just tell us some stuff tells us who did the most damage we don't really have a lot going on right now so there's not going to be a lot of stats we got two star points next encounter we can fight more goblin goofballs so it costs us zero to re-roll these let's go ahead and do that we do have um a second army size now we got a second kepri is that what we have we have a kepri okay so if we get a second kepri what happens can we combine these no do we need three i'm assuming we need three of these oh we got items too oh god that's when that's when things start to get a little complicated for me <laughs> I've never been good at figuring out what items to buy. Okay, let's uh, let's buy this guy. I'm gonna work on these Kepris, but I'm gonna, since we have a synergy, why not use it? So the Stalkers gain 25 spell power at the start of combat. They vanish and appear in the enemy back line 1.5 seconds later. The first, okay, and, that, and then our, when we have four of them for the first eight seconds after they appear Stalkers, deal 50% increased damage. I appreciate that both of those like synergy effects are completely different. They're not just scaled up versions of the same effect. Um, that definitely shows that the devs are like working hard to make like a lot of the me mechanics unique and stand on their own two legs. Okay, so let's see how this goes. So they just appear behind nothing personal kid. Omiwa Shindru, you know? Oh, wow, we, uh, we completely tore them in half. Victory! I haven't played down down wall. Is it down wall? Is it downfall? I think it's downfall. Is the uh, the mod in question that I already mentioned? Yeah, downfall. I haven't played it yet, mostly because I still haven't gotten like squeezed out all of the playtime out of Slay the Spire yet. But I know it's good. I know it's good. I have heard nothing but good things about it. Goof Goblin Goofballs. We'll get some more rewards. Gain two Pale Hearts. Travel, sure. We could get a Gorbin. Oh, heck yeah, Gorbin. So we can see in the top left corner um, what everyone's effect is. And that makes buying things really easy. This, inter this interface is very intelligently designed. We can we can very easily tell what, what, what everything is. So let's buy this Kepri. So now they, they've up upgraded. Um, so we'll go ahead and throw them on the field. I, you know, oh, and we have a Gibbs. We have a Gibbs and we also have a Kepri, another Kepri. I wonder if there's interest mechanics, like if we save money, then we'll earn more money. I see we've got a map going on in the left side there. A lot of things going on in this game. We've got a cell portal inventory. When do we get items? I wonder. Bow, 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 bow. This guy jumps over them. Do, 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 do. Okay. So things are going very well so far. We're, we're getting very much the same materials. Okay, we've, we've gotten our first bit of gold. I wonder if these first few combats are sort of like the first few combats in the multiplayer auto battler. Is they're just meant to be kind of easy? This definitely seems new. Eager newbie. It looks like we're going to be making choices down the road. Um, we have four spaces now. I'm assuming if we have a second Kepri on the field, it do they don't actually synergize. We could try though. Let's see. Yeah, they don't synergize, so you don't get they don't count as like being two separate beasts and fighters. So let's just like um, I'm just gonna sell them actually, because they the Kepri doesn't synergize with any of our stuff. We could get a beast, a Zuzu. Zuzu synergizes. How much? We have one star left. Why don't we keep that last star? And that way, maybe we can suss out if we've got um, interest mechanics.
Again, you, you'll notice I'm not doing anything too clever with the uh, placement of characters. I don't, I really don't know how I'm supposed to make, you know, how I'm supposed to optimize location. They, had a, they also had a Kepri, I think. Plus one hearts full. We got some soul hearts. Whoa! You just got a bunch of star points. Road tail. Box of books. Stumble upon an odd, oddly inviting library. Available rewards. Sure. You come upon an odd side post. Slightly off the beaten path. A small house-like enclosure holding a variety of books to interest any adventurer. Fill, it, fill its shelves. Above the roadside library, a sign reads, A wealth of knowledge for all to share. To steal this knowledge will bring despair. It rhymes. Book of gain level. Use this from the inventory to instantly level up. There's levels? I didn't even realize. In combat rooms, gain the hex modifier shrine in a random hex, which grants a unit plus one mana regen. Or we could just gain a ton of star points. Let's just do that. And see, I really just kind of want to suss out if there's interest mechanics. We spend some time looking through a few books, spell books, fiction novels, the complete lineage of a royal family, anything you can imagine. After spending some time consuming the information, you continue on, feeling just a little smarter than you were before. Nice. So we're going to be fighting Unlucky Lass. Hasn't been able to find a good army yet and is stuck with just one active t uh, trait. They have Sanctus. We've got quite a lot of uh, foes on the field. We are gonna roll. We'll buy something. Stat points are spent to purchase units and refresh the unit store. I'm not seeing anywhere any kind of like... We can see uh, the enemy's traits, by the way. That's a nice little feature. So we've got another Kepri. Uh, Kepri is the... I guess we're gonna be like continuing the level up Kepri. Um, I think that's it for now. I could roll again, but it feels like a kind of a waste. So let's just, um, let's just like fight with what, we, what we've got. I think we can probably afford to lose one. That being said, I think, I don't think we will lose. I think we've got a pretty good team bomb. I, I can usually tell you can you can usually tell you're gonna win if you're the first one to, to kill a unit Especially if your your weakest unit still has enough juice to, to fight what's left Because then you just have an insane advantage Nice Victory So if I don't get any interest this time Then I know there's no interest mechanics and that's fine. That means that you're incentivized to spend your stars when you can it doesn't look like we we do level up your units gain plus five percent maximum health when overtime is reached deal 400 spell damage to all enemies uh i haven't reached overtime once so i don't think that's worth it gain one curse whenever you break a cursed unit in the unit store gain three star points that's interesting gain the special equipment spear of fate which grants bonus attack speed to the wearer and two adjacent allies let's grab that now we have our first actual choice um, concerning who we're going to fight. We could fight Merchant of the Sands or the Golden Serpent. I, it seems like the rewards are much the same. I think these are both stores. So let's check out the Merchant of the Sands. Is that a mirage? No, no, that's just some someone basking in the desert sun. In front of him, a large carpet full of antiques and oddities soak up the sunlight. As you approach, he lifts up the brim of his sun hat to look at you, a beaming smile across his face. Beautiful day, friend. I'm glad to see you stopped by. Browse and peruse, ruminate and contemplate. Everything has a price. So we could take a sword and smith of pay to win. Oh, pay to win, huh? Use this from an inv the inventory to spend five gold and upgrade your merchant sword. Uh, do we have a merchant sword? 
Drop this on a friendly non-legend unit to summon three random units that share talent traits with it. Hmm. Or two, two, gain two experience to increase your level. Next level you will choose from three available perks. Kind of improperly assembled pitchfork plus 20% attack damage. Pay five gold to upgrade this weapon. So I guess that is the sword that we can pay to increase i kind of like that let's give that to someone when a particular oddity shimmers among the sands you reach down to pick it up when the man stops you waving a finger back and forth ah, ah, ah. look but don't touch unless you wish to trade not gold but jewel not jewels something special I promise you won't even miss it as you pick up the sword you feel a little different somehow he just nods and waves you on your way spear of fate we get a spear of fate so our next thing is um a combat can we make this quick i have to get back to being zen <laughs> he seems to have a uh, some kepris of his own or the arbiter who seems to have sanctus i don't know what uh, units are good against what units so why don't we fight the guy that we actually has the same unit as ours because i uh, can pre be pretty certain we have a better version Maybe not, actually. Actually, for sure not. Is that a level 3? They definitely are stronger than our Kepri. Dang. I haven't seen any units, like any synergy units, but I, I have to, I should start spending some stuff. That being said, um, we should give some stuff to our units. Like We've got some interesting equipment now. Kind of let's why don't we give our improperly assembled pitchfork to Kepri? Use this from the inventory to spend five gold and upgrade your merchant sword. Let's go ahead and do that. So that is duelist lead in cutlass. I think we can do that again. Now it's a perfected two-edged war scythe. <laughs> and it's actually pretty good now. Stalker, beast stalker. I'm wondering if anyone has like uses spell. Gibbs roars going invisible for six seconds and gaining 25% attack damage for the duration. I'm not sure if any of these people or creatures use mana. For the next five seconds, his attack deals 25 bonus spell damage and drain two mana from its target. Well, they seem to do spell damage, so why don't we give them the staff as well? The start of combat, the wearer and allies directly above and below them gain 30 attack speed. So let's give um, one spear to... Actually, who did I just give that to? Zuzu? Ah, uh, that was real dumb. I did, should, can I take that off, actually? No, once you've given them an item, that's kind of it. There's a chance we could lose this. But we've got tons of health, so maybe not. Yeah, it's not looking good. It's, it's it's not looking good. It was almost looking good there for a second. Yeah, we lost. That's okay. We lose what? Two hearts? That's fine. We, we are still at full health. We know Kepri did our, the most damage. They did pretty good. We just need some more creatures that synergize or level up the creatures that we've got. Stumble upon a stone that promises new allies. Oh, that would be nice. You note a small side path and follow it out of curiosity. At the end of it is a stone tablet. Surrounding it are footprints. Seemingly of ver many various types of creature. The tablet bears a particular, peculiar inscription. Speak softly now and find a friend to call for more would bring offense. Um, get two curses, but then we get a bunch of units. None of those units synergize, or we get the Shrine Blessing, or Tier 2 Gale, that actually is a beast and actually does synergize. Yeah, let's take that. Politely request. You ask the tablet if it can provide you with allies, and it begins to shake. 
Moments later, a few allies burst out of the tablet in a bright flash of light. After some prompt introductions, the confused friends agree to assist in training for the tournament. So we've got chat and shop. We've got another shop. I don't know if I'll have enough money. Studious Goblin looks up from a large ledger, pushing up his wire rimmed glasses. Name, race, occupation, the tournament council is not responsible for injury from burning, maiming, decapitation, protect, uh, petrification, poly transformation. Sign here. As you finish signing your name, a brilliant flash of light blinds you for a moment. Uncommon units unlocked. When you can finally see, you, you find yourself standing in some weird sort of shop. A goblin behind the counter looks familiar. Welcome to Bob's shop, the finest definitely not looted equipment around. We have everything you could need to take on the Daya. Good luck. Judging by the look of you, you're going to need a lot of it. Wow. So we can buy a sword. We don't have enough to buy anything. Item remover. Use this from the inventory to gain one pale heart. Drop this on an enemy unit to slow it for the combat. Granted 10 armor. It heals 2% of its maximum HP for, per second. Yeah, let's buy that. That seems like a good one. Okay, uh, next is another combat. I will hug him and squeeze him and call him George. That's a great reference. I love that reference. Gigantomancer. Are you not entertained? Another pretty good reference. Sir Sparkles. Fay and Healer. This is Dragon and Marksman. Flash fires three piercing fireballs that deal 150% of his attack damage. Enemies struck are weakened for five seconds. Um, let's go for XP. Okay, so, oh, and this guy is a champion epic. We can take Gormand. We do have a beast, um, we have one beast ally we could put on there. We have this Gale. I feel like Stalker isn't as helpful anymore. We could take off Teak. Teak isn't, um, I don't think they're as relevant anymore. And I think this tier two beast is going to be better. And then what, why is Scrapper? Is it, is um this new one? Yeah, Gale is a Scrapper, okay. So if we wanted to, we could go hard on scrapping. We still don't have another like army slot, but I could like buy these just to kind of hedge our bets a little bit. We've got Miki. Don't I already have a Miki? I just bought a Miki. I do think the silhouettes of some of these creatures could be a little bit more defined. It's kind of hard to tell them apart, I won't lie. Let's start re-rolling a bit more, a bit more aggressively. Sorry, is this a, this is another Kepri, but I don't think I have enough. First of all, I don't have enough space. If, if I could get another Kepri, that would be good. I think I'm going to sell Teak. Buy this Kepri. And maybe we can we can uh, upgrade it. No Kepri there. There's our third Kepri. If I buy it, yes, it's our Kepri is tier three now. Our Kepri doesn't synergize at all with our group. That's not good play. Still, um, you know, I'm glad to have him. We can upgrade our uh miki so i am really i'm like hedging our bets like doubling down on hedge bets now in fact i'm pretty sure i'm gonna swap someone else out to get um four beasts actually we don't have four beasts we we would have scrappers so we could like trade out zuzu um if we traded out zuzu for miki Then we would have another scrapper on the board and we'd actually have two synergies going on. Decent. We have lost the stalker um, synergy though. Oh, there's Coda. There's, that's another beast. 
So we could go for four beasts now. But we could also go for four scrapper, so I, I don't know. Um Alright, let's just like leave this for now. I think we've got a pretty good set. Me I don't know if it's good enough to win, but it is something. It's not looking good. It's not looking good. Actually, that flip worked out to our advantage by a large amount. Oh, no, that heal came in at like the worst moment. Come on, kill that one unit. He just refuses to die. Overtime is coming soon. I don't think we're going to win this. Oh, that one heal might actually have won them. I don't know what that does, but it's pretty cool. I can't believe I actually won that. Nice. So Gale did we get the most damage. Kepri is no longer relevant. Kepri is not really holding their own. Maybe they're doing some cool stuff I'm not aware of, but I feel like they are supposed to be a nuker. So I don't think that uh, I should keep them on the board anymore, even though they are a tier three. We should go hard on like one synergy, maybe Scrapper or maybe... No, not Beast, because I think that's what Capri is on, on there for. But they have all the items. That's a real bummer. Encounter two of the Grand Tournament Champions. A booming laugh captures your attention. My fair young lady, you're joking. You approach a practice table where the djinn, uh, Kyo Dini, is, uh, I'm sorry if I mispronounced that, is gesticulating grandly. The young lady they are speaking to looks to be an old giantess clutching what appears to be a beautifully crafted tapestry. As you approach her wide, glowing eyes look your way. She points at you with a gnarled finger, then at her pa tapestry. Here's someone who can puzzle out this plot. They beacon you over. My dear, River believes a visual story is best, but I feel that a verbal story is more efficient. It's so finalized and formal in writing, don't you think? The djinn conjures a thick tome into their arms and looks it, uh, holds it out to you. Remember which one you choose is legally binding. I am more of a reader. The tapestry is stunning. A tale of two tales. Let's go for tapestry. Kiyodini guffaws, sounding like thunder, echoing from all directions as the book disappears in a puff of smoke. Well, you know what they say, bad choices make good stories. We shall see how our story unfolds when next we meet. They say this not unkindly as they turn to leave. River flaps a hand at the djinn's retreat, as if to say, ignore them. She then holds something out to you in friendship. Elemental War Banner. The Weaver becomes an elemental, or the Wear becomes an elemental, additional to their other traits. It gains 50 spell power. Oh, cool. So we can actually add a trait to someone. If we added Stalker, then we would actually have three synergies on the board. Or War Banners and Shops are half off. River will remember you. Uh, I don't think fondly. I don't know. Maybe, maybe fondly? More banners and shops are half off. Um, let's take the stalker trait. Spend the evening reading stories of River's past while she weaves. She shows you a tale of how she lost her arm in a great battle on a bridge defending a fortress under siege. In the morning, the giantess or the giant presents you with a beautiful silk flag. As you turn to leave, she clasps your hands in hers and a silent way of wishing you well on your journey. That's a nice little story. I, I appreciate that. We're fighting Priest of Adalon. And then we fight the boss, I think. Okay, so... Um, let me see here. Who's... Scrapper, who's a beast still? Gale and whoever this is. And I guess... Technically, Zuzu. We don't like Zuzu. Zuzu doesn't matter anymore. <laughs> So why is uh, Kepri on here? 
Yeah, they don't synergize with anything. So let's take them off. In fact, uh, I, I'm sure y'all... Oh, I really want that War Scythe back. It really sucks. That I, I'll keep Kepri for now. But they, they have not been um, holding their own. Who do I have that can replace them? I do kind of wish it was easier to tell what level a unit is. I feel like it's in a way uh, being decentivized to find out. Like it doesn't matter what you what level they are because, you know, uh, levels don't matter too much or they don't matter as much as synergies maybe. Um, I don't know. Who's our stalker? It's Gibbs. What is our, what is it? What's the effect of beast at level four? Gain plus 15% attack and lifesteal. Oh, that's really nice. Okay, let's buy Coda. We'll see, we'll see if we can improve things. I don't know yet what, how. Um, I'll roll this. We've got another Kepri. I'm not, no, we're not doing that. Roll again. Not really getting stuff that I want. Uh, yeah, none of those work for me either. And if I roll again, I can't actually buy anything. Um, I kind of just want to put this, what is this, Coda on the board. So we have three beast. If I really wanted to, I could put Zuzu on the board. But I kind of don't want to that badly. I don't think that they're very good, at least not for my comp trains. It's target dealing 200 spell damage and healing itself for 100. So it's a life stealer. Um, and then we can put the stalk, stalker war banner on someone. Becomes a stalker in addition to its other traits. So we could like put it on Coda and then they would do the, you know, Omawai Shinderu kind of thing. So let's do that. And we'll put this, a, t a sword on someone. I don't know who, maybe, uh, yeah, let's put it, put it on Gale. Did I accidentally make Gale the stalker? I did. I wanted Coda to be the stalker. At least I get the synergy, so it, it, I guess it'll work out for the best. So are we fighting a boss? We are doing some pretty good damage to the boss, but it looks like they have a second health bar. Yeah, they do. Gale is actually doing a great job of tanking. Oh no, they got stunned. No! Why did I say anything? I think I'm gonna lose this. Please wake up. Please. Like, it, it wouldn't be impossible for us to lose this. No, nah, we're, we're, we're done. I guess I could have healed them. Slain. Oh, that is actually just an instant loss. Oh, bummer. So what's our unlocks? What's our meta progression here? It does, We don't get to find out. I think that that's a full version thing. We can almost make it out. If I was like really stubborn about this, I could like maybe make out some stuff. Um, we get some difficulty and cosmetics, run features, perks. I am interested in uh, what they have in mind for meta progression. I'm hoping it's just replayability stuff. Um... But, you know, that was pretty good. I, it, I maybe... I think there's, like, a lot of complexity, but I don't know if it's complexity really building to a lot, because, like, does it really contribute to, like, the player's decisions? Like, I could... I guess I could pivot my whole team if I think it'll have a better chance of wing, winning against certain um, factions, but I don't really have a good idea of what factions are good against others if there is like a rock paper scissors thing going on or am i just trying to build a competent team that has not just like synergies in that they have they're all built on one faction but also synergize with other factions um so i guess uh you know part of the fun here would be to you know in trying to figure out what um characters work well together what monsters work well together what synergies work well together um, but I, I personally think that there's maybe too many things going on, or at least if there are, um, they're not 
very well explained or it's not very clear how you're meant to use them like if you get items i'm not sure who i'm supposed to give them to i'm not sure how they're going to benefit what person and this is actually kind of something i found was true in stuff like auto chess and even like team fight tactics is i'm not really sure how to build a team and the game doesn't really um try to teach you and um maybe that's fine maybe people will be cool with that but i personally think it's a lost opportunity but you know that being said it's an early version so maybe the full version will have more tools that kind of help or assist the player in, in figuring those things out but in any case um you let me know what you think of tales and tactics and uh maybe let me know how i can figure out better how to play it because i would like to play more of it i think it is a very fun game and um i'm, I'm willing to to you know tr try more of it see if i can suss out some of the deeper strategies um if you consider uh if you liked my video consider hitting the like button consider subscribing if you're new to my channel and i'll see you guys next time take it easy